Um, so Chip, you had just mentioned uh, the budget crunch that Massachusetts currently finds itself <coughs> in. Mm -hmm. Governor Baker's administration recently announced a projected $294 million budget gap, citing lower than expected sales tax revenue. Uh, the administration is considering public employee layoffs and program cuts to fill this gap. Um, so how would you fix the budget? Obviously, that's a complicated question, but in a few words, uh, are there cuts that should be made? Are there ways that, to raise revenue that you would support? And we'll start with you, Senator Lesser. Yeah, I know. Very important topic and very, uh, very good question. So uh, a couple of things. There's a couple of things we have to look at when you're handling a tough budget picture. One is, is we have to... Go, you have to go over the budget with a fine-tooth comb, and you have to make sure that you're squeezing every last efficiency, every last ounce of savings out of every program that you possibly can. That means making sure programs are working well uh, and are working efficiently. Uh, I've worked, actually, uh, very collaboratively with members of the Republican Caucus in the Senate on things, for example, like uh, innovation and government initiatives, digitizing records, uh, moving more, uh, more of our kind of very lethargic state bureaucracy into the 21st century in terms of you know RMVs operating online things like that saves a lot of money allows you to then reinvest that um, either into back into the public through tax cuts or uh, or through um, better and more efficiently run programs uh, the other thing uh, that we need to do is we need to take a look at our tax code in this state uh, because quite frankly what's happened over the last generation or so is the tax code has has quickly and very dangerously shifted so that those at the very, very top are paying less and less of a share and folks like us who are in the middle are paying a lot more as a share of our income and that is very unfair. So what, one thing I would advocate for is, for example, there are hundreds of millions of dollars in tax expenditures, write-offs for um, corporations, tax breaks for, uh, um, uh, for, different, for different corporations in the state. I would look at, I think all of that needs to be on the table uh, when we're looking at a budget crunch and saying, okay, you know, it might be worth closing some corporate tax loopholes if it helps pay for kindergarten teachers uh, in Springfield, or it helps fund the substance abuse programs we're talking about, or it helps cover the mental health screenings and the mental health advocacy that, that Chip talked about earlier. So I think that's the prism I would look at. We have to, as a threshold matter, we have to get as much efficiency out of government and out of the system as, as possible. That's, that's an absolute essential. And we also have to work on making our tax system fairer so that, uh, so that those who have the ability uh, pay their fair share and that people who require a little bit of a break get that as well. Okay, thank you, Chip. Yeah, it's a, it's it's a the biggest question, right? How do you spend my money wisely? Um, and I think as a government, uh, historically, we haven't done a very good job. Uh, we have, as I mentioned before, some people say that we have a revenue problem. I don't believe we have a revenue problem. I do think we have a, a spending problem. Um, the one thing that I talked about during this campaign is what I mentioned a few minutes ago: welfare reform. When you have three, four, five generations of people collecting state benefits, there's a problem there. Um, there needs to be something. That, there needs to be significant reform taken into account. Suzanne Bump, our Democratic state auditor, uh, has been doing a great job of vetting out these people who are abusing our system, not only on the user side, but also on the, uh, the vendor side, the, the store owners who are taking advantage of people. Programs like this are supposed to be for people who are in a difficult time to get themselves to a better time. It's not supposed to be a lifestyle. It's not supposed to be the, the, the way you run your life, and then now you become generational. And that's where we find ourselves right now. There are enormous savings that could be, could be taken in, into account there. But we need to go out there and find that and make it streamlined. We need to incentivize people to get back to work uh, and, and put people back into the economy in that way through training and job skills along those lines. As I mentioned, in Massachusetts, um, historically, we, ha we, we have a lot of programs that do some pretty good things for people, but it becomes too bureaucratic often. Uh, when was the last time you went to the Registry of Motor Vehicles or uh, you know, using some other state services? We've done a nice job of getting a, closer and closer to a more automated system we need to start doing more of that so that we're not constantly just filling, backfilling jobs with people where we can do things more offline um, and, and save those tax dollars. Uh, we've got a lot to offer here in Massachusetts. We have a wonderful uh, um, state that we live in, but the Pioneer Valley specifically, and that's all I'm concerned about is the Pioneer Valley in western Massachusetts and how funds are going to be brought back here from the eastern part of the state. Uh, we don't get our fair share of uh, revenue from the, from the Boston area. And you don't need a legislature that's kind of just going along to getting along. Uh, you need somebody who's going to go there and make some noise. And I've done it for 25 years on a local level as a selectman, a school committee member, and a community activist. In fact, this year in the school committee for the first time ever, 
I would challenge anybody in the state of Massachusetts to, to see what school committee actually turned back $100,000 back to their town government. We did it in Ludlow because we're very efficient, uh, and, and I'm proud to be a part of that.